All right, guys, today I thought I'd do a little bit of a comparison between Half Face Blades, Essie, and Bark River Knives. Some of my favorite knife companies, and especially Essie, Barky, and uh, Half Face Blades is definitely a newcomer. And while I don't have an extensive list of knives from them, primarily because they're hard to get and pretty expensive, I do have this Extremist Mark I, and it is the closest in direct comparison to my good old SE3. So definitely different design or different like blade styles or makes. And once again, the Extremis is slightly smaller, but closest to this little SE3. Now I will say, um, as far as it goes, there is definitely a difference in um, half face blades. They are definitely more of a uh, military or kind of um, tactical appealing knife company that just makes essentially um, almost gas station level knives that are just super high quality. I mean, something like this Extremist, you know, definitely is something that you would find from a company like m -Tech or, you know, some of those more kind of gas station brand uh, kind of designs. So it definitely has that kind of going against it, in my opinion, whereas I think when you, you know, directly compare it against something like this SE3, the SE3 is definitely a no-frills blade. Like, this thing does not look exciting at all, you know, but it is heavily functional. You have a really useful finger choil to get choked up on that blade nice and close. Of course, you know, you have a really good just handle overall that, once again, no frills, no contouring, just nice, flat, and straight and it just works and once again you know these knives are really designed by people who are active in search and rescue and you know this is what they ultimately came to for a very you know for kind of almost neck knife small easy to carry you know general purpose blade where something like the extremist is on the other side of the table where it is designed to be a lightweight small compact blade that can be used for you know just general duty tasks or pushed easily into um, tactical applications. Now I think the biggest thing that this has going against it is the fact that it is so tactical, so self-defense oriented. Now don't get me wrong, I do like my self-defense and tactical blades for stabby things, but at the same time too, we do have to realize that 90% of the time with most people in most people's lives, you know, something like a tactical knife is not for fighting, is not going to be very realistic. Even people that do carry knives with the express purpose of, you know, using it for fighting or self-defense are rarely actually going to use it. Once again, it's very similar to a firearm. You know, the amount of people that carry firearms for self-defense versus the amount of people who use firearms for self-defense is very large. There's a very large difference between them and so or there's a very large difference in the actual you know statistics of use so carrying a knife for that express or intent purpose is oftentimes very difficult to justify because most of the time you're using a knife in very mundane uh, utilitarian applications so when you have a knife blade shape that is so out there and or you have something like a recurve that is very hard to sharpen it's not the most attractive blade whereas something like this sc3 very easy to resharpen, very easy and straightforward to keep a nice edge on it. Now, I've gone a good bit of talking without mentioning the third contender, and that is Bark River Knives with the Bravo 1. Now, the Bravo 1 is a little bit of a different knife from the other two because the SE3 was designed for search and rescue specialists or people who do search and rescue by people who actively are in search and rescue. Now, the Bravo 1 was designed for specifically marine units, um, marine expeditionary units and was designed by the military or marines to be most specific and so this is a little bit different because this is actually a real military designed blade by military operatives and it really shows and i think that this is honestly probably something like the bark river bravo one is one of the best kind of 
truthfully um, utility slash fighting knives. It does have things such as the thumb ramp that you'll notice on something like this Extremis. You know, it does have a pronounced thumb ramp, but honestly, that thumb ramp was really more designed for um, being able to use the knife in low light applications as more of a place marker for your thumb. And as a kind of a backup, if you do need to push this into something like an ice pick grip, it will, of course, grab the meat of your palm and lock it in. So you can use it in an ice pick reverse grip for stabby things, but ultimately it was really more intended for, you know, being able to low light, use your knife, know where it's at, know where your grip is, and to be able to lock in on that blade. So this is really more of, of an honest to God kind of military fighting utility knife. And honestly, when we look at true to form military fighting knives like the K-Bar, the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific, many of the Harzi Spartan blades. Honestly, most of them kind of boil down to the same essential form of this blade, where you have a nice, thick, reinforced blade stock of steel. You have a thumb ramp or thumb protection of some sort, usually with jimping to help lock in in case you do need to use it in a reverse grip. And most of the time, um, this one's not a good example, but a good chunk of the time you have some form of forward choil to put your finger up onto for extra controllability. Now the reason why all of these are so present is because most of the time, about 80% to 90% of the use of this knife is going to be purely utility without any type of even show of force for self-defense. So being able to have a utility knife above all is most important. So anyways, you have this extremist looking at or putting up against this guy. Really, the extremist is the polar opposite. Once again, that thumb ramp is about the only thing they share. The extremist has this very um, pronounced, very, very pronounced, very recurved blade with a very sharp tip um, that is more of a spear point. Now, a lot of people will probably say, you know, Matt, why aren't you, uh, you know, comparing this against something like the Cav Junior or the Disaster Junior from um, Half Face Blades? And the first reason is, no one sent me one. I don't have one here as an example. And once again, they're expensive and hard to get. So I do not have one of those. Those are a little bit more leaning towards the utility, but also to a lot of the times where I'm about to get into next is true across most of half base blades. Um, lineup. So the first thing I really don't like, of course, blade shape aside, is the thickness of the steel. Most of the steel thicknesses on the um, half face blades are very thin. And once again, when you're really looking for a sharpened pry bar, you do not want a thin sharpened pry bar. You want a thick sharpened pry bar. And I'm not encouraging prying with any blade, but when you need to do things like batoning, when you need to do things like prying, you just need to, you need to have a blade that is capable of that. In addition to a lot of the fancier steels that half face blades uses, do have a lot of good properties to them, better edge retention than A2, better edge retention than 1095, but they also run the risk of not being as durable or hard wearing. Once again, things like 1095, A2 tool steel are tool steels. They are higher carbon, so they are more resistant to cracking, chipping, breaking, and just shearing. Now, A2 is not always the best example of that, but at the same time, too, um, even things like CPM3V would be a much better choice than the aforementioned S35 or S45VN that they regularly use in these half face blades. So ultimately, aside from that too, um, the sheets, I'm not usually a very big fan of. Once again, the extremist is a little bit of an outlier, but they try very hard to make these sheets very high speed, low drag. They even are felt um, lined so that they don't um, wear on the blade. And once again, these things are not uh, not appreciated, but they are really more of something that a collector would want on a collector's knife. And ultimately, I think that's really where half face blades kind of leans. They make their knives appealing enough, hypothetically enough, of a combat utility knife that, you know, for those people that want to feel like operators and for those people that want the military esque blades, but you want something that's ultimately more of a collector's piece, I feel like that's where. 
um, half face blades is suiting most of their kind of um, attention towards. Even if you notice, especially on their Instagram with their half face um, like logo, they'll vary it and you know make it different kind of special you know half faces. And once again, these are all cool features, but they really are not practical. They're really not strictly utilitarian. And ultimately, these knives are made more for collectors that want knives that look battle capable and not necessarily surely battle battle capable or wilderness capable battle capable or wilderness capable blades so anyways that's what i ultimately think about the half face blades versus essies versus bark rivers you know they really aren't bad knives and i'm here to tell you you can baton them you can hard use them within reason um it's just i think that you end up paying a lot for them and their performance is either on par or slightly below something like a Bark River Knives um, Bravo or something like an SC Blade. So ultimately that's kind of what I think, it's kind of how I feel about them and realistically I think your money would be better spent with something like a BRK, um, BRK Bravo 1, something like even a um, even a Spartan uh, Blades Harzy design, any of those are going to be ac actually cheaper than the half face blades, easier to attain, and just similar or better performance. So ultimately, I do like my HFB, and HFBs are good. They're just not as rooted in practicality as other blades. They're really more designed for collectors than they are for actual users or operators. And don't get me wrong, if you gave a Navy SEAL any one of these knives, they would use it. And I think that's kind of the point to hammer home is that, you know, many blades could be a Navy SEAL or Marine or Green Beret or Delta Force knife. Like the, these operatives and operators, they don't really care what they use so long as it doesn't break in use. It's just what they're using what they have. And a lot of that also goes with guns too. A lot of people, you know, they want specific firearm models because, you know, like say the Sig Sauer P226 has been used by a lot of notable military forces. And so it has a lot of provenance to it. Uh, or the H&K 416 has been used by a lot of military forces. So it's very um, desirable. And so people buy like the MR416, uh, the MR417, and they buy like the Sig P226. Some people even go as far as to actually buy the military models of the P226 and the reality is while I'm not saying that the P226 is a bad handgun or the MR416 is a bad rifle uh, they just they are simply tools and operatives use whatever tools they're given um, rarely do operatives really seek out a very specific tool for their use whether that be a knife or a firearm or anything else they really just use whatever they have and so a lot of these tools kind of come to be because that's what's available to them and it's what they use so it's hard to go wrong, but don't buy into too much hype about, oh, I need to get this blade or this gun or that thing, because a lot of it is just simply people using the tools they have. You know, if you have a hammer, you use it, right? So uh, it doesn't necessarily make it a special forces hammer just because the Navy SEAL used it. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video and the mini rant at the end. As always, God bless, and I'm out.